Hi, everyone. My name is Jim Crispino. I'm the Senior Director of Developer Evangelism here, and this is our first DevCast of 2022. We haven't seen you all since, uh, well, probably the end of November. So, uh, so we're excited to get going again for this year, and our first host is uh, John Carnell. He's the architect and team lead of our developer engagement team, he basically runs the Genesis Cloud Developer Center and all the assets that go along with that. And he will be speaking today on CX's code in action. So he's going to show us how to use CX's code uh, in a CI CD pipeline to automate uh, the configuration of your Genesis Cloud environment. So before we get started with that, a uh, few logistics. Uh, we will try to have a 10 minute uh, Q&A session at the end of this tutorial. And um, if you have a question during the session, please use the Q&A uh, widget of Zoom to post your question. Um, Q&A is better because we can track it and answer it um, versus the chat. And then secondly, uh, we are recording this tutorial. We'll upload it to our YouTube channel. Um, you can always check out in this video or any of our past videos, if you go to the Developer Center at developer.genesis.cloud slash video. And uh, that has a link not just to DevCast, but also to a shorter, uh, well, not a shorter series, a, a different series we have called Dev Drops, which are shorter 10 to 15 minute tutorials um, covering various topics. So I'd encourage you to just go out there and see what we've got for you. And with that, I am going to stop sharing and I will turn it over to John and he can run the show and show you what he's got. All right, fantastic. And thank you everybody for joining us today. Uh, my name is John Carnell and you know, it's interesting. I love nothing to me uh, demonstrates something better than working code. So the goal of today's talk is to really demonstrate how to build a very simple CI CD pipeline that promotes uh, Genesis cloud code from one environment to another uh, and really kind of walk through it. So this talk isn't going to be like an introductory talk on uh, Terraform. We already had a video on that early last year. So we're going to make some basic assumptions that you're at least familiar with uh, how to structure and build a Terraform project. But uh, what we're going to do is look at using uh, GitHub Actions and Terraform Cloud as an example of building a CI CD pipeline and then talk about some of the experiences I've had working with uh, various customers and partners um, in, in introducing uh, CICD and contact center uh, to the contact center uh, and some of the best practices. I hate to use the word best practices. Let's say hard lessons learned. Um, so let's go ahead and dive in. I got a lot of material to cover and I still wanna try to leave some time uh, for Q&A. So, for those of you that haven't seen one of my talks, uh, I have been in software development for about 26 years. I, as Jim has said, I'm the team lead for the developer engagement team. Um, before I came here, I worked at a financial services company, a rather large one, uh, as their integration architect. So this subject is near and dear to my heart. I have a very deep background in service-based development, but also uh, a deep background in platform engineering. It seems like no matter what I do in my career, I always come back to doing something around platforms and DevOps and, and system administration. Um, so it's, it's just uh, funny how it's always worked out that way. So what we're gonna talk about today is we're gonna talk about some of the challenges of deploying across multiple environments, particularly for anybody who's worked in a contact center as a system administrator. And then we're gonna get into building a CI CD pipeline using GitHub Actions. I chose GitHub Actions because it's very, very simple, very easy and straightforward. But the concepts that I apply in here can be very easily picked up uh, with other platforms. We're also gonna talk about how we can leverage Terraform Cloud uh, to be used as our backing state and a place to execute our Terraform scripts. And we're gonna talk about some of the lessons of preparing for CX's code within your own DevOps organization or building your own CI CD pipeline. And I want to wrap it up with what's coming next, because we've got a lot of work going on in the uh, CX's code space and CI CD space. So I want to share that with you guys. Some of this stuff's already available and out there and has been out there for the last two, three weeks. We've got a very exciting component that we're going to be releasing uh, soon that uh, eliminates a lot of the need to integrate the Archie CLI into CX's code. So we're going to go through a lot of that. So let's jump right into it. Now. Um, 
many of you people have met Mike. If you've seen any of my previous talks, Mike always looks so serious because, you know, he's a system administrator doing telephony work. There's a lot of uh, riding on his shoulders. But in a traditional model, uh, usually if you had multiple environments for your contact center, a dev, a test, and prod, Mike would be responsible for helping promote and set up and configure the environment across all you know the the flows and the your functionality across all three of these flows and this was usually a manual job mike could write scripts but he would usually have to do a lot of this work by hand and as anybody who has worked as a platform engineer or a system administrator knows configuration drift is the enemy it's very easy even the best of us we're fallible creatures we make mistakes we forget to do some kind of configuration and then we spend hours trying to track down what happened and it's the worst part is when it's in production. So this is kind of the traditional model of, you know, very tender loving care of Mike having to go up and set up and configure these systems. But that's really kind of difficult because if you look at a typical scenario, and this was probably one of the first CX's code examples I built, even something as simple as building an architect flow with all of its dependent objects and integrations can end up being a lot of pieces of infrastructure that has to be set up and it has to be done in the right order. And it has to be done consistently. If you look at this architect flow, just alone, we have to set up the architect flow. We have to set up a data action and integration. We have to make sure all of the queues are configured. And then we also have to make sure all of our components are properly deployed in AWS. So in this particular example, we have an API gateway that's fronting a Lambda talking to a machine learning model. And all those things have to happen in, in order for you to be able to deliver that functionality to your customers. Yeah, we have an API for this and Mike could script this using our API, but that's a lot of work. I mean, it's still a lot of custom coding and Mike has to manage everything. He has to know all the ordering of dependencies. He has to manage the IDs and the propagation of those IDs across environments. And so that becomes a lot of work. And that's really where we want to get Mike out of that space. That's where CX's code, which is a Terraform provider, uh, comes into place. It allows us to declare how we want our contact center to look, its configuration, using a, a, a domain-specific language. So it's not a full-blown programming language. It still requires some technical skills. And we want to get to the point where we let the robots kind of take care of the deployment, right? That Mike does his work in a sandbox and then or in the development environment and then promotes it immutably across all of the different environments. And as part of that promotion process, he's also doing QA work, right? He's running tests to make sure that things are still working and that things are still functioning. And that's what we're really gonna be focused on in today's talk is to talk about this space of taking CX's code and our Terraform environment and really start building out our first CI CD pipeline. So let's go ahead and build a pipeline. I'm gonna go through this stuff pretty quickly, uh, but be aware that we do have a blueprint out there that pretty much has all this code. So you can download it, you can modify it and run it against your own environment. You can try it out uh, in your own environment. So for most of us, uh, CIC solutions in the wild are really gonna fall into three categories. They're gonna be on-premise and I tend to run into these with companies that have very big shops or, or very big companies, you'll have Jenkins set up. Maybe you're using Urban Code or Bamboo or something like that. They're all installed online. They're the highest level of complexity, right? You're, man you're managing everything yourself, but it also gives you the most control. But I've been seeing very much a trend. I was originally on the very far left over here when I started my career working in CICD pipelines. But you're seeing a trend now to moving a lot of your build and deployment environment to the cloud. And those uh, cloud capabilities are really, uh, they, can, they can be full blown like AWS's cloud uh, pipeline or uh, Azure, or they can be smaller providers like Travis and Circle CI. But the big characteristics about these cloud CI CD pipelines is you don't manage the infrastructure. The latest, if we go over to the right, is really where we're gonna deliver our solution. And I find that this is probably the easiest to get started in because it builds right on top of your source code, code repository. If you use uh, Git bucket, uh, uh, excuse me, Bitbucket or GitHub or GitLabs, 
you're really going into this GitOps space where you're able to build your CI CD pipeline directly into the repository um, that you're storing your code in. And the configuration of your CI CD pipeline happens inside the repository. I always tell people if you're brand new to a CI CD pipeline and you're already using GitHub or Bitbucket or, or GitLab or something like that, start there. It's simple, low barrier to entry. It allows you to experiment and learn. So what we ended up doing is we ended up, uh, for this example, we're going to use GitHub for our CI CD pipeline and our source control repository. And we're going to walk through with GitHub, we're going to use something called GitHub Actions. And we're going to walk through and we're going to define uh, using a kind of a YAML file domain specific language, all the steps that we want carried out so that every time we check in our code, it's going to kick off a build process. Now, for any of you who have worked with our platform, you know that we can do everything so far except for flow deployment uh, directly from Terraform. Uh, we can set up queues, we can set up our data actions, our integrations, but we still have to call out to the Archie CLI. Uh, and also do a little bit of Python scripting because at the time we wrote this, we didn't have uh, uh, a few uh, Terraform resources or CXS code resources uh, defined yet. So. I'm going to show you guys in our example here how to set all of that up in GitHub Actions. It's pretty simple and straightforward. And you can actually take the code from our blueprint and be able to look at it. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to use Terraform Cloud. Terraform Cloud basically allows you to manage the Terraform execution so that you don't have to manage the backing state yourself. Some people like to manage their own backing state. They set up Terraform to use AWS and S, uh, AWS Dynamo and S3 to handle their backing state. I didn't want to do that. I tell most people, if you just want something simple and you've got some flexibility, Terraform Cloud offers a freemium model. And so we're going to use Terraform Cloud for our backing state. We're also going to execute our Terraform uh, project in Terraform Cloud, uh, just to keep things kind of simple. So here's our example, uh, before we get into code, of the CI CD pipeline that we're going to build out here. And this is gonna really have three major steps in it. We're gonna do a deployment to dev. So the moment we contribute our code to our GitHub repository, it's gonna initiate a build to our dev environment. And that build is basically gonna go out. It's going to uh, do some uh, Terraform work. It's gonna do some work with the Archie CLI and it's gonna also do some work with a Python script. Then as soon as that build successfully completes, it's going to trigger off a set of platform tests. And platform tests, I think, are incredibly important in a CI CD pipeline. They give you the confidence, they take investment up front, but they give you the confidence that when you deploy something, you have a base level of testing that says, I didn't break, break an action. Usually, our platform tests are going to be like after a deployment kicks off, we're going to run all of our platform tests and make sure everything is good. Now, in our particular CI CD pipeline, and every company is going to be a little bit different with how they want to implement their CI CD pipeline. As soon as we do our dev deployment and we successfully deploy to dev, I run our platform test. And if our platform tests pass, it automatically initiates a promotion to the test environment. Some companies like to do things a little bit differently, but within Genesis Cloud, that's actually how we do deployment of code. We deploy to our dev environment. We have a very complex and large number of platform tests that execute. And we immediately push that to the test environment if the platform tests pass. So uh, let's go ahead and keep going out and keep moving from there. All right, so before we get started, I wanted to talk about what GitHub actions are and the different points, because you'll hear me throwing around some terminology in here. And it's good to um, get familiar with this. And I found this uh, diagram uh, from Nate uh, Cooch, who did a really nice job of kind of laying this out. In GitHub, everything starts in the repository. All of your workflows and what you're going to call your actions are going to be defined in a .github directory. A workflow represents a series of steps that are going to be taken in your CI CD pipeline. And you're going to either be running those through a series of jobs. And jobs can be parallel, um, which is the default behavior. Or Sequential. So you can kick off a series of activities as jobs, and jobs are basically a set of steps or instructions in them. Now, in here, and he doesn't really show this here, you also have what are called actions. Now, actions can be 
references to remote code that you can pull down and execute. And we'll have some of that here. Or they can be a way of organizing your steps to make your flows um, more readable. So what we're gonna do, the best thing to do is think about the workflow as the overall activity. And some repos I've seen have multiple workflows. In our example, we're only gonna have one workflow with multiple jobs. A job basically represents a virtual environment. So as we're executing with the stuff within a job, it's isolated from any other jobs, which means that sometimes we have to reinstall or do the same steps over and over between our dev and our test environments. Um, and then you're gonna have a series of steps. So it's really important to kind of wrap your head around that. Workflows are the overall definition of an activity. Jobs represent a discrete chunk of work that's running inside a containerized virtual environment and steps are the actual work of what's going on. So what we're going to do is we're going to define two triggers I might uh, in here. One is we're going to uh, basically set up our, our workflow to be able to be kicked off manually or to be able to be kicked off anytime there is a branch to be executed. So if I pop over to my code in here and I look, I have out here in a .github actions, I have a deploy flow.yaml. And so at the very top, I'm setting up two different triggers that will kick off on my workflow, either when code's committed or when I manually go into GitHub Actions and go ahead and make some changes. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna walk through some of these different sections um, of the code and we're gonna uh, kind of highlight what's going on here. So remember my terminology and you'll see me, I'll pop back to my slides and I'll probably be moving forward through them. I leave them in there as reference material, but we're gonna do the majority of what we're gonna look at. It's gonna be in code in the project that I've pulled down from my blueprint. So in here, we're gonna have the definition of jobs. And in this, code, in this example, we have three jobs, a deploy to email, dev, uh, email flow to dev, an execution of platform tests, and then a deploy to email flow to test. Now, if you remember the default behavior for jobs when a workflow is initiated, is to kick them off in parallel. We're gonna enforce making these be sequential by using a needs keyword in here. And basically all of my workflows are defined using a very YAML-esque uh, domain-specific language from GitHub is very easy to understand. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna define our job I'm going to define the environment that I want to work on. In this case, I'm saying I'm going to take one of GitHub's uh, images. You can actually go out and build and deploy to your own test images. I'm just using one of GitHub's. And I'm going to basically start setting up that job. So I'm setting up some environment variables. And those environment variables are going to be basically what my code is going to need to execute. All right. So I've got some stuff out here. Anybody who's worked uh, with Archie, uh, we'll know that we've got uh, some location stuff that we have to set up and APIs we have to set up. We have to set up um, and insert into environment variables our OAuth client and secret. I'll walk through that shortly when we actually get into watching this in GitHub. GitHub has a very nice secrets manager that you can use for managing these secrets. And then we're gonna execute a series of steps. Now I could, and you might see some stuff out there with um, steps, I could just have everything defined as one big set of files. And instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a combination of local and remote actions. Remote actions are predefined actions that sit out in GitHub repositories. You can actually build your actions and register them out there with GitHub. Um, so like the ability to check out, that's a remote action, it's native to GitHub. It's gonna check out your project. So as soon as your flow kicks off, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go check out our project to this local instance. And then we're gonna run something, and this is where the uses keyword comes in, we're gonna run an action. And in this case, because it's got a dot slash and a path, it's basically an action that we're running locally. So since I've got to use Archie and I've got to install Python to carry out some of my work for my flow, I'm going to go out and I have defined an action out here that installs the dev tools that we're going to need. And an action can have input variables, it can have output variables, but it's really nothing more than a series of commands 
that you want to run as part of your CI CD pipeline. So my installation of my dev tools, I'm basically going out and I'm setting up my Python libraries for the Python script that I have to run. We use that at the very end to send up, set up our email domain and route because we didn't have a, a resource uh, at the time in CX's code to handle it. We set up and install Archie so that we can go ahead and execute our Archie flows. And then what happens in our deploy flow is we basically go out and we're now using another remote flow to grab our Terraform uh, to install and set up Terraform and provide a Terraform API token. I'm using Terraform Cloud. I've got to have an access token generated by Terraform Cloud. Uh, and I put that in my secrets manager, which I'll show you. And then we're just going to go out and we're going to execute our Terraform code. And then we're going to publish our Archie flows. And as part of our Archie flows, we're passing in two input variables. One is where we want to put the results file. And two is the actual flow that we want to execute. Now I've got these all set up out here as locally stored actions, right? So I can go out here and on my publish Archie flow, you can actually see I go out to the command line, I use the Archie CLI and I publish the flow, right? I go out here to my email domain, which is like one of the very last things and I run a Python script. So if you remember from, Oh, excuse me, just one moment. Got to flip over there. If you remember from our slide, basically this code example that I'm doing here is this guy right here. I'm deploying with Archie CLI this architect flow. I am setting up my queues and my agents all using Terraform. I'm setting up my data action and my integration to talk to some API gateway calls that are already out there. And I'm all executing this within my uh, CI CD pipeline. So basically, when this CI CD pipeline has a commit to the repository, I'm going to go out, I'm going to kick this off, and I'm going to start deploying this all to dev. So when I apply to Terraform, I'm actually calling a job out here, an action that I've written out here because I like to organize my code. I don't like my CI CD pipeline, my main script to have everything in it because frankly, if I'm writing it, they get a little wordy sometimes. And so this is a way for me to organize them and be able to at least be able to make sense of them. So if I go out, you can see I'm doing a Terraform init and I'm doing a Terraform apply, but because I'm using inside of my Terraform code, I've actually set up it to use Terraform Cloud as my backing state. So let's go take a look at that real quick. So when I go out here, if I didn't have anything set up for my backing state, it's going to run, run it locally and against the file system. But because in my Terraform provider, I am using a backend of remote, I'm setting my organization to be thought mechanics. And then I am saying that I'm going to have different workspaces in Terraform Cloud, one for my dev environment, one for my test environment. So when I run Terraform, the presence of that TFI API token and the presence of this backend remote will ter tell Terraform, uh, my Terraform application, that when you run it from the command line, you're actually going to be community communicating back to Terraform Cloud. So let's go back to the slides real quick. All right. So I've kind of walked through this. We've set up our workflow. Why did we need this little bit of Python at the end? Well, as I stated, we're running this Python script at the very end after Terraform is done, because at the time we wrote this blueprint, we didn't have a resource that would hook the email domain up to the flow. Since then, we've got that in there. Uh, we, we've actually published that uh, resource. It's now available out there. But the point of this is that Terraform and CX's code is very, very flexible. And sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming for people because it's, where do I start? You know, What happens if I don't have a resource provider out there? Hey, you can do just about everything with Terraform and CX's code. We have resource providers out there. We have the ability to define queues and we have the ability to define you know, pretty much everything. I can walk through the list later on 
of the different resources out there. But if for some reason we don't have it out there, you can always write a little bit of scripting code and integrate it directly into Terraform and carry it out. You know, the thing I've learned as a platform engineer and as an architect is sometimes you can't have perfect, all you can have is pragmatic. And so you, you, you know, you need tools that allow you to be able to combine those out there. All right. So we walk through what is all this stuff in here? What are all these uses? What are GitHub actions? We kind of walk through that. Now I want to walk through the next step, and that's our platform tests. So after our dev environment executes, you'll notice out here we have another job. And after it goes out and it has actually executed the deployment to dev, we're like, OK, we, we need to have this successfully complete, and then we will kick off another flow. So remember, as I said before, we deployed to dev. If we successfully deploy to dev, we will then kick off our platform test. If we don't successfully deploy to dev, we won't, we won't kick off our platform test. We won't automatically deploy to test or any of the steps after that. So again, what we end up doing is we have a simple set of Python test scripts that I wrote as part of my CI CD pipeline. And you guys can see that over here and you can look at those. And all I'm really using is our API to go out and connect and check to make sure that the actions of you know, the queues that I want to create it were created. And you can make these platform tests as sophisticated as you want. You could just check to make sure all the entities are created out there. You could write your test to simulate a call or a chat or do any number of things. So it's really up to you about the level of investment that you want to make in your platform tests. I will personally say, I think it's really important to always have platform tests automatically check and detect if there were any problems after you did a deploy to an environment. All right, let's go back to the slides and then I'm gonna hop over to GitHub and actually show this a, a little bit in action. We have our test deploy. That's pretty much, if you look at the code, I'm not gonna walk through it, but it's pretty much the exact same steps we did before. The only difference is, is I'm providing different credentials. I'm providing a different OAuth client ID, I'm providing a different workspace for Terraform. So now I'm going to walk through what we had to do in the GitHub Actions, because in order for our GitHub Action to work, we had to set up a couple of secrets. Those were the IDs, the OAuth client ID and secret uh, out there uh, that is actually going to execute. And we needed to set up the Terraform uh, API token. Now, the thing about um, Secrets is there a one way process. So once I put the secret into GitHub Actions, nobody can go into the IDE and see them. You can only see them, or you can't even see them when you're injecting and working with them in GitHub Actions in your flow. And this is a pretty standard pattern. Um, a lot of people use secrets managers. Uh, you can use AWS Keymaster. You can use uh, Vault. I know HashiCorp has a Vault as a, a secrets manager, but you're not going to want to put your secrets directly in your pipeline. You're usually going to want to inject them out there. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at GitHub Actions. All right, so to see an action, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go out there and I'm going to go to my repository, right? And if you go up here, you'll have an action uh, where you can actually see all the previous jobs that have been run. And to set up your secrets, you're going to go to settings and you're going to have a secret section. And you can click on your secrets and you can define them and do all sorts of good stuff. Basically, I can go out and create them. So this is where I've taken my Genesis Cloud OAuth client IDs. I've taken my environment. I've taken my Terraform token. And I have set them up. Now. I also want to show you guys what it looks like on the Terraform cloud side, and then we're going to make a modification and watch this thing run. All right. So from here, I am going out to Terraform cloud. I've already logged in, and I see that I have two different emails out there or two different workspaces. Now, remember, when I talked with you guys, um, the inside of my Terraform file in my main.tf, I had my setup for my back end and I had a prefix. And this is how I manage having the same, basically applying a name to my environment. So I say my environment is X and it's gonna be Genesis email dev, Genesis email test. 
And if I go out here and I click on this, I can actually go to settings. Now, because I'm running Terraform uh, inside of Terraform and I'm running some of my pieces out in GitHub Actions, like for Archie, I also have to duplicate some of my secrets over here. This is partially because I've had to split the Archie deployment to run in my GitHub pipeline and my Terraform stuff to run in Terraform Cloud. I'm really, really pleased at the end of this demo, I'm gonna talk about, we have now an Archie CX as code component, which will let you run Archie flows and deploy them via the cloud. So basically everything becomes a native Terraform deployment. Uh, you'll see as we go through that, you're gonna cut out a boatload of work that you would have to do in building your CI CD pipeline by just going out and leveraging native Terraform and native Archie. So to set up our settings and our environments, we can go out here. We're gonna to go to, I believe it's general, or no, I'm sorry, variables. And we're gonna set up a set of variables. And in the case of sensitive variables, I'm gonna declare these as sensitive. So I'm not gonna go through and walk through. It's pretty easy to figure these out. If someone like me can figure them out in 10, 15 minutes, most people can figure them out pretty quickly. Um, but basically I just say that because again, you have to think about this pipeline it's running Terraform, so it's going to run all of my Terraform components inside a Terraform cloud. So it needs all the information that would have been environment variables or variables being passed into Terraform there, and it needs the secrets. We also need some of those same secrets running inside of GitHub Actions. All right, so enough about that. Let's go and actually see this guy in action. So I'm going to go out and we're going to try to do a little bit of a live demo. That's always dangerous, right? So I'm gonna come out here. I am going to go to my platform. I'm gonna open this up. And I am going to go to my Terraform uh, scripts. I'm gonna to go to my main and let's go out and Delete this, uh, let's add a queue, let's do that. We're gonna add a brand new queue. Um, I have a module out in here in the Terraform that just uses the CXS, CXS code component and I'm basically passing in a list of queues that, that I wanna create. And so let's call this uh, super premium customers. Okay. And I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna go do a get, and I'm gonna add do this and push this out to my repo. All right, so if everything works, what's gonna end up happening is we are gonna see a new flow, there it is. Ooh, everything worked on a demo. Um, we're going to see a new flow being kicked off. And in there, we're first going to see the deploy of our email flow or our email job. So I can actually click on that. Now you can see also that there were dependencies out here. Um, GitHub Actions detected that there was a sequential dependency because of the needs keyword. And I'm going to go out there and I can actually see this guy going and running. So I've already got through, I've already installed all of my Python scripts and my Archie CLI. I'm running all of my Terraform components and deploying my queues, deploying my data actions, my integration, all that good stuff. And now I'm applying my Terraform state. You can actually see it. Now this is actually executing, even though it's spitting out the plan here, the backing state and the code is now running in Terraform cloud. All right, and this is still running. This will take a little bit. All right, I'm not gonna sit here uh, while it finishes. It can take a little bit of time. So let's keep going and I'll check back in so you guys can keep me honest. All right. So we talked about setting up our Terraform cloud. We talked about setting up our environment variables and we saw it run. So let's talk a little bit about what it means to prepare for CX's code uh, for your organization. And these are just uh, lessons learned from my own work, working with customers, working with partners, and just 
uh, my experience working in DevOps and platform engineering too. So there's a couple of questions that you have to ask yourself, uh, particularly in a contact center, because building a pipeline has been out there for a few years in code and development. So engineering, the engineers, the software engineers have kind of absorbed some of these lessons. But from a contact center perspective, there's a couple of questions you have to ask yourself is first, where are you at in your DevOps journey? Do you already have a CI CD pipeline in place for other things? Do you have a DevOps team? How experienced is that DevOps team? Because I always tell people, and you're gonna see me later on, I'm gonna be like, start small, start small, start small, is don't try to bite off everything and just jump in both feet first, especially if you have a new team. Give them time to learn and play and start with a, maybe take one flow in its dependencies and get that working from beginning to end. Because a lot of times too, there's a slightly different skill set that you're gonna need from your telephony uh, engineers than you would from a software engineer or a DevOps engineer, because telephony engineers have been working in a different environment. A lot of times they're experts in setting up networks, understanding how phone systems and trunk configuration works. Maybe they've done a little bit of scripting, uh, but if they haven't, this can all be a little bit new because even though Terraform is all about using uh, declarative files and text files, there's not a lot of scripting involved with uh, it. There's still some idea of scripting with it. Um, and what are your expectations? Are you expecting kind of a low code to no code environment? Like, you know, some of the people that I've run into are like, oh, I just want to be able to click a button and promote. That's not how a CI CD pipeline works. As you guys have seen, there's a lot of kind of configuration and declaration work, understanding how source control repositories work. CX's code is not a low code, no code environment. I know we have partners that offer that kind of environment, but I always bring that up because if you're expecting a low code, no code environment, you're gonna set yourself up for frustration. The other question to ask yourself is how complex is your environment? How many organizations, Genesis Cloud organizations do you have? How many flows are you looking at managing? What kind of data are you looking at managing? Because this is a really important question. Some people when they're new to CX's code are like, I wanna manage everything with it. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. If data changes, let's say a Q membership assignment changes on a regular basis, maybe you don't want, you wanna set up your queues using CX's code, but you don't wanna do your queue membership because that means every time you wanna change your queue membership, you have to do it via code deploy or via a CICD deploy. So these are some of the questions that you have to ask yourself. And here's some of the foundational principles that I have. And number one on the right is start small. Contact center interactions are often modular. They start with some kind of starting point of a customer coming into your org and they represent almost a discrete stack of functionality. And I always tell people, think about your flows as a starting point, look at all those dependencies and that's how you kind of start thinking about a particular CX's code project and how they should all live within a repository. CX compo code components should be defined in plain text files, that's what they are and they should be checked into to source control. Source control is your friend. You know, uh, CX's code and Terraform is not really designed to be run from your desktop. It's really meant to be built in a CI CD pipeline going out of your source control. And by building these CI CD pipelines, it's really about automation, getting the human being out of there. If you find yourself running CX's code against production manually, you're probably not doing it right. Okay, so here's some pra uh, practical advice. Don't go big right away, start small. Decompose your scripts, start from your architect flow and identify your dependencies and group things that have very high cohesiveness together in one project. Some people are very tempted to take their entire call center and just dump it into one big source control bucket. That just means you have one great big monolith that you have to deploy. If you take the approach of, hey, I've got my stack of my call flow and its dependencies, and I put them in a single source control bot repository and then, then in another flow, you're actually decomposing yourself uh, and making it easier to deploy things independently of one another. Build and test stuff locally and then set it up in your CI CD pipeline. Don't try to build and use your CI CD pipeline to kind of test everything out, do everything locally, and then only when you're ready, start building it out in your pipeline 
And I tell people start incrementally. A lot of times new, uh, new people to CICD will try to set up their dev and their test and their production environment all at once for a particular flow. Get everything working and deploying to dev. Then once you know everything's working on your CICD pipeline, get it working with the test and then deploy to dev. And this is actually uh, one I also tell our professional services group. Don't be afraid, don't feel like you have to start by setting up all your own infrastructure. If you pick up a book on Terraform, they're like, oh, you can manage your backing state in AWS and S3. Oh, I need Jenkins running locally. That is That has its own set of complexities. And unless you're willing to have a longer tail and a more time for ramp up of your DevOps team, I always recommend people look at cloud-based DevOps solutions. It's a great way to get started. And, you know, frankly, don't get too hung up on getting your scripts perfect the first time around. One of the lessons I've learned, even as I've gotten into Terraform, is there's more than one way to do things, and I have to often refactor and refactor. So I'm going to quick pop over here and just show you guys that we've now finished and deployed. As you can see, we deployed to dev successfully. We deployed our platform tests and ran our Python script. They ran successfully. And then we deployed to our test environment. So if I go out there and look at one of our environments, I'll just pick our dev environment that I have out here. I can go look at my queues. And I can see I now have a super premium queue out there. So a very, very simple example, but it really comes down to um, I've gotten the robot, I've gotten the human being out of doing that deployment. The robots are now doing it. All right. So I've got about maybe uh, seven minutes. So I'm going to run through this stuff fairly quick, quickly because I want to talk about what's coming next. Um, we've got a lot of stuff that has either recently been released or uh, is being released very shortly. Uh, the, we have now the ability for our exports, export as HCL. Um, we're a little bit different than a lot of other Terraform providers. Uh, and even Terraform doesn't provide the ability to easily export an existing environment into a Terraform environment. Our initial release only supported JSON. We now support HCL. As part of that, we're also discovering <clears throat> that there's little things that we didn't think of uh, when we wrote our export. So for instance, our APIs don't allow us to export user secrets. Um, so we don't have any ability to see your user credentials. Um, and if you try to export your organization, you won't even get your credentials back. It's a one-way street. So what we've done is we've introduced the concept of variable substitution for those things that we will not export or manage via CX's code. We try to now inject a Terraform variable and a variable provider file that you can fill in so that you can use your export. And then for those things that you we can't export, you can just fill them in in a single file. We're gonna get into remote modules and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about the CXS code Archie component. So the Terraform export is HCL is really simple. Using our latest provider that's already out there, you just have to do an export as HCL equals true. The default behavior is still to export using JSON, but now you can export using HCL. Why is this uh, important? Frankly, uh, Terraform puts everything as HCL. While they have JSON support, all their documentation, all their examples is HCL. I often push people to use HCL as their starting point. So it always felt a little bit disingenuous. We exported everything in JSON, but then if you read our documentation in CX's code and Terraform, it's all in HCL, and you kind of had to do this translation. Here's an example of our Terraform variable substitution. Now, when you go out and you see an exported integration credential, for instance, before it would just be no field exported. It would be empty. We now generate a variable for you. And then we also generate an auto var file that you can fill in. So then if you want to start managing things under Terraform, you just have to go out and fill out those fields. So put that out there. Uh, probably one of the th most exciting things that I'm looking forward to working on next is we're building out a repository of uh, Terraform remote modules. Remote modules basically let you reference a more complex configuration of Terraform and use it within your own code 
by pointing to the GitHub repo. So for instance, one of the things that I found at, we have a lot of metadata that goes into setting up particular types of data actions or integrations, and that can be kind of painful to reverse engineer. So as my team is building this stuff out, uh, we're starting to take our lower level constructs, our resources, and we are building out uh, modules, remote modules that you can then reference in your code. So in this case, I'm trying to set up a, a data integration in Genesis Cloud using a Lambda. I've got all the code and all the, 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 the kind of uh, metadata part that you'd have to figure out on your own, figure it out, and I just expose a couple of variables that need to be passed in. So uh, we have this all captured out in our github.com Genesis Cloud DevOps repo. Uh, we've got maybe four or five example modules out there where we're starting to build this out and we're planning on building out a lot more. And if you have ones that you want to add, please contact me. We will gladly kind of set up a repo, review your code and get it out there and publish. But I want to share you guys this because what you're going to very quickly find is CX's code is just that lower level functionality. The remote modules that Terraform provides is a really cool way of building more complex constructs that can be parameterized. And now for the last thing, the one last thing, right, is right now, if you want to deploy your Terraform provider, uh, you have to go out and use the Archie CLI. And the Archie CLI is an incredibly powerful tool, but it creates a dependency that you have to have the CLI installed in whatever environment you're going to run in. We've now got a semi-native uh, Archie component out there that will basically take your Archie file, upload it to the cloud and execute it within Genesis Cloud. So you can just run your flows, you can import your flows and execute them uh, inside of Genesis Cloud. Now, uh, the maximum amount of time we currently allow for a deployment is 15 minutes. If you're, I know some people have flows that are like really, really big flows. They take longer than 15 minutes, you're still gonna use the CLI. But I wanted to give you guys an example of this because what this really sets us up for is it allows us to now uh, go out and get rid of our GitHub action dependency. So rather than setting up, for instance, a CICD pipeline in Terraform and in GitHub actions, I can literally point like Terraform Cloud and use a GitHub trigger and just have everything execute within Terraform. No Archie CLI needs to be installed. As we build out in the examples that I'm going to show here, um, we build out um, everything. It just runs within Terraform. There's no Python scripting or anything like that. So I took a um, flow that I have been working on. Hold on a minute. Let me find the right one. Sorry about that. I've got a few out here. So I took a flow, it was actually a chatbot flow that were just published where the flow actually deploys using the AWS provider, the Lambda, the IAM roles, and then use CX's code. Uh, it had been using the Archie CLI and then deployed the data actions, the Lambda configuration, all that stuff. But now I'm gonna actually go out and do a single deploy with everything. So this, uh, this is now deploying everything. This is the beauty of using Terraform as our underlying foundation is it basically allows us to deploy not only our AWS components that the flow depends on, but also the CX components, or if I had components in Azure or Google Cloud, I can bring them all together in one environment. So I've already gone out, it's, go it's already gone out and created my, my uh, IAM roles, my trusted role, it's going out and deploying the Lambda right now. Um, now it's deploying the Genesis Cloud integration. And the difference here now is my Archie flow is now being deployed out via the cloud. So no longer am I having to have the CLI. If I go out and look at my example, I am basically just going out there and defining the file. And because Archie isn't 100%, the whole meta language of Archie isn't in CX's code yet, um, I still have to manage my dependencies of what I depend on, but it will deploy, uh, I can just do this all within Terraform. 
So my first flow has deployed. Now I'm just waiting on my second flow and then the actual widget deployment that's going to occur after the second flow is created. So the reason I bring this up is this is incredibly powerful. As we start building out, we can leverage CX's code with other cloud environment integrations so that we deploy everything as a single stack, right? So now I'm going to be really uh, risky here. I'm going to go out. Let's see if my chat window has now deployed. Hold on, wrong URL. We're doing a live, uh, a live demo here. So there are bound to be mistakes. So I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna go to my web chat. I'm gonna go to US West. More logins. I'm gonna log into my Carnell One org. This is basically my dev org. Web chats. There is my chat widget that just got deployed by CX's code. Let's populate this and let's go ahead and start the chat. Oh, I got a lucky cue, excuse me. I always forget to do that. All right. And in this chat widget, I'm just going out and it's asking me, what's my order? I'm gonna say, I want, or how can I help you with your order today? And I'm gonna go, here's my order number. And here I'm calling out to the AWS Lambda I deployed using a bot flow behind the, uh, a chat, inbound chat flow and a bot flow that were deployed via Archie. So I think that's pretty cool because what it's basically going to allow me to do is get rid of all of this other code that I had to deal with for installing my Python scripts, installing my Archie CLI, and all of that good stuff that I had out there that I could do. And it was great. It wasn't incredibly hard, but the more I can simplify, the better off I'm going to be. So all, a lot of this stuff just goes away. And now I could have Terraform Cloud literally running everything natively. All right, so with that, I am going to wrap things up. Um, just to, to you guys know too, uh, we are planning on going and opening up the CX's code Archie Terraform provider for beta soon. So please reach out to Becky Powell. We're literally looking at probably going, I think next week with it. We just got uh, to our first production environment. And I think by next week, we're going to release review. So I get a list of what we eliminated here. And I want to wrap this up with just some additional resources. Uh, two great books on CX's code or on Terraform in general on how to get started with it. And then this is everything that we have out there for documentation right now for blueprints, CX's code, videos, and we're constantly evolving this list. I'll put a new developer forum uh, post out there with these links too. So on that note, I am going to um, provide Archie resources and then I'm gonna open it up for questions. All right, uh, Becky, can you uh, help facilitate questions? I sure can. We haven't gotten any questions in the Q&A yet. Um, everybody, if you'll take a look at the, the Q&A icon in the lower panel of your screen, if you've got any questions. And uh, in the meantime, to reiterate what, what John said, we are looking for beta participants um, for Architect Flows and CXS Code. Um, if you're ready to get started now, as John showed, uh, you know, we already have support for Archie integrated with CX's code. We've got a, a really nice video that I will throw into the chat link if you're interested in knowing more about that. But we are, in the meantime, planning to release uh, Architect Flows as first class citizens, uh, as it were, within CX's code. Uh, looking at a beta release date of approximately March 9th, but keep an eye out on the developer forum. Um, I'll be making an announcement once that date gets a little bit closer and doing a, a second call for beta participants. 
Um, participating in betas is really easy. If you just want early access, that's fine. I'll set you up. Um, otherwise, you know, if you'd like to be a more active participant and uh, have a run through, give feedback, or uh, participate in our developer forum, we, we welcome that level of participation as well. And it looks like we have uh, a, one question out there from Suresh uh, Kumar. Uh, Suresh asks, does the dev QA and prod environments need three different gen cloud organizations? So I'm gonna give you my recommendation and I'm gonna tell you uh, the answer to that. My recommendation is always try to go with three different organizations or different environments if you can. Um, you can manage this and I'll get into a couple of different strategies here. Um, you can manage uh, having different artifacts within the same Genesis cloud organization. The, the risks there are the same as if you were trying to manage in other environments. You can get leakage between environments. If you don't do something right in your CI CD pipeline, you can actually accidentally take down an environment that you weren't expecting. Um, it, as a general rule, I always rec or uh, guidance, I always recommend three different environments. Now, as a strategy, if you're like, okay, I only have one environment to work in, um, what I would recommend then is really uh, look at anything that you're putting under management. You go out and you uh, prefix and control through your scripts, uh, prefix your, your code. So for instance, the data act, the chatbot Lambda is out there, uh, Blueprint is out there right now in um, beta uh, or draft format. Uh, so it means there's still gonna be mistakes in it, but you can look at it if you like. In there, I have a couple of examples of where I did prefixing. Uh, some people use divisions. Uh, what I will say is that we have done some work with divisions, but not every single component is division aware yet. I know, uh, and Becky, correct me if I'm playing off an old tape, uh, but some people have used divisions to uh, control that. But that gets tricky because if you do run into a component or API that is not division aware, now you're kind of, you've painted yourself into a corner. Yep, so in general, right. yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Becky. I was saying you're, you're exactly right. Yeah. So in general, I always like to uh, recommend three environments. Um, I would talk with uh, two, um, I would talk with your uh, account manager too about the feasibility on that. I know we can sometimes be flexible on that, but I'm not a salesperson. I'm not involved with account management. So don't take anything I say as gospel. <laughs> So thanks, John. We've got one more question that came up in chat from Shashank Venkata. He says, or she says, um, could we use any language to write the platform tests? You use Python. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day with the GitHub repo, you're basically getting a, I think it's a container personally. I don't think it's a full blown VM. So all that means is you have to install the tools and you have to install the SDKs. You could, um, take your platform tests, they could be Java jar files that you pull out of a repo, or they could be source code that gets built right as part of your pipeline. You just have to make sure that you've installed the appropriate tools at the time uh, you've done that. Now, one of the reasons why I always choose Ubuntu in my GitHub example is because I know I can pretty much install everything via an app to get for all the core languages. Does that answer your question? Uh, John, I don't see it. Uh, he says, uh, yes, it did. Cool, cool. I just chose Python because it's it's easy. Um, that's like my natural scripting language I always go to. With my JavaScript, while I can do it, I will never claim to be a JavaScript professional. <laughs> All right, cool. All, All right. right, last call for questions. I don't see anything else, and we are at the top of the hour. So uh, yeah. John, you want to close us off? Yeah, well, guys, uh, thank you so much uh, for coming. What I would say is keep an eye out on the um, uh, DevOps page, the Genesis Cloud DevOps and Blueprints. We're constantly publishing Blueprints. And one of the things I'm really pushing my team and other teams who are building Blueprints is to do everything via CX's code. So um, as we go forward, you're gonna see more and more CX's code uh, examples out there. And finally, keep an eye on the resources. We're constantly building out new resources. If we don't have one, we also take contributions. We actually had a partner who was like, oh, we need this resource. And we were going on break. 
So we're kind of short staffed with the holiday break. We came back, he wrote a PR on it. Um, so we always welcome contributions uh, to our CXS code provider. It's completely open source. All right, that's all I have. All right, well, thanks everybody for joining. We'll see you all next month. All right, thanks Take guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.